worship him tonight. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, right now, let's not wait until the last song. Let's just right now begin to worship him and pour out our praise. You watch over every promise that you made to me. You're on. 
scripture and I think it speaks for itself this is Philippians 4 6 it says do not worry about anything instead pray about everything tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus if you want peace, the word says, tell God what you need. Talk to him. He wants you to draw near to him. It says, it literally says, tell him what you need. Tell him all your thoughts and then thank him for all that he has done. So right now we're gonna tell God what we need. And then we're gonna thank him for all that he is. He is the God of peace, Jehovah Shalom. And then the word says that then, only then you will experience God's peace. Do y'all believe that tonight? So if it's okay with y'all, we're gonna sing this chorus again. Sing Jehovah. Jehovah Shalom. Your peace has Firm through the trial, rest in the storm, present in weakness, the word of the Lord is Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shalom, we receive your peace. got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again, cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah, and I know it's not much, I've nothing else fit for a king, except for a
we worship you tonight we take a moment to sit and be still to cast aside everything that's distracting everything that's in the way God we take the time right now to, to worship you and be thankful for all that you've done for us God worshiping you costs something for us it costs our time and our attention talents. And God, I pray that right now in this moment that we would that we would just sit and that we'd understand who you are, what you've done for us. God, we love you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, and your love, your forgiveness, and so many things that are boundless for us every day. 
pray tonight as we continue that we would, we would focus on you and what you have for us, that we would learn something. God, challenge us, mold us into what you have for us. God, thank you for the time we get to worship together. Pray that we never take it for granted. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Hey, y'all can be seated. Retreat registration is open! It is January 26th through the 27th. It is incredibly difficult to hold my head this still with the giant cone on me. And it'll also be extremely difficult to get a spot at High School Retreat if you keep procrastinating. Spots are limited, so sign up ASAP. As possible. <sighs> City Hope Youth, listen up, especially if you're a junior or senior, okay? Honduras mission trip. The applications are open. Through Kingdom Builders, you can go to another country and do the Lord's work for free, okay? The Lord has blessed our church and we wanna bless you. So go. Remember, this is just an application. So be checking your email to check on that status and make sure that you stay in the loop. Guys, you remember that awesome merch from Collective last week? It Gasoline. Fire. Yeah, and remember when you went home and cried on your bathroom floor because you didn't get any? Like that? Well, we have good news for you. The best news. The best news. There's a little left. Just a little bit. <laughs> I heard they found it in the depths of the Kid City toilet. I heard they found it at Dirty Docks. <laughs> some of you may have noticed some nibble marks on there. Um, and I think that's because they found the leftover merch uh, at Whataburger. And um, what can I say? Yes, we all know. <clears throat> Anyway, it doesn't really matter where we found the collective merch, but we have it, so it's gonna be for sale if you wanna grab some. And it's fire. Hope Youth, how are we doing tonight? Okay, okay. Man, I'm so glad that you guys are here. Can we give it up just real quick for our announcement video team? Those guys every week. They bring, they bring the energy, they bring the jokes, they bring sometimes the cringiness every week for us, but we absolutely love it. We love you guys, y'all are awesome. They told you guys about a few things, but I wanna highlight a few of the things that they mentioned in that video. The first one is high school retreat. High schoolers, where are y'all at tonight? Okay, okay, high school retreat. So if you are from ninth to 12th grade, this is for you. It's a weekend where we really just get to dive into God's word, learn things about ourselves, learn things about scripture, and learn what God has for our lives. And so if you are interested in high school retreat, you can go ahead and scan this QR code we've got on the screen. This will take you directly to the link where you can sign up for that. Every year, high school retreat fills up 
very quickly towards the end of the year, and so make sure you get spots because spots are limited for this weekend. The second thing I want to tell you about, spots are also limited for, and so there's another QR code that's about to pop up on the screen for our juniors and seniors. This is our Youth Honduras missions trip that's coming up. Um, Youth Honduras, how many of you guys have been to Honduras with us on one of these missions trips? Um, If you're interested in this at all, find one of those people that just wooed. Um, It's a life-changing week. And I can promise you that if you'll take the step to apply for this mission trip, and if you'll take the steps to go to Honduras, that God will wreck you and change your life forever. So here's that Q, or there's that uh, cityhope.cc slash youth. If you want to sign up for the application for that trip, there it is there for you. So now that that's out of the way, we can go ahead and kick off our series. This week we are starting a series titled Bullies in My Brain. And so uh, a bully is something that all of us have probably encountered in our life. A bully is something that we're all familiar with in our lives. Bullies are people or those that seek to harm, humiliate, or bother someone who they view as vulnerable. And rather than just talking about physical bullies, maybe someone at your school or or maybe even in your own home, besides talking about the people in our lives, tonight we're gonna start by talking about the bullies in our brains. If we were to be vulnerable tonight, the the people that say bad things about us at school, the people that would speak lies and negativity over us at school would be probably a a long list, but the bullies in our own brain, the, the thoughts that we have, the things that we allow to play inside of our heads sometimes can be the greatest bullies that we would ever encounter. The thoughts that we can't shake and maybe the things that we feel like we're so weak at times that we can't even fight those thoughts, those insecurities, the the bullies in our brain that magnify these thoughts or sometimes even produce fear and insecurity in our lives. Uh, Insecurity is something that I think we all face, uh, especially as teenagers. This is something that is rampant right in front of you. And I remember when I was a middle schooler, I remember the middle schoolers, you guys know, there's something that happens when you enter into middle school. Things start changing. You start growing hair in your armpits. Like you're, you start wearing deodorant, hopefully. Um, that's actually my first point tonight. If you're taking notes, uh, wear deodorant. Um, and so, but you know that there are things that in middle school start to happen. But one of those things that starts to happen, oddly enough, is insecurity. Whenever I was younger, I never dealt with insecurity. I never thought about, when I looked in the mirror, I never thought that there was anything wrong, but something about middle school, something about these, those teenage years, man, the acne starts popping up, the, popping up, and for me, the, the chubbiness started to come on, and, and I remember insecurities eventually began to rule my life. For me, insecurity was a, a bully in my brain that every time I looked in the mirror, I felt less. Every time I, every time I would have conversations, I was constantly worried, what's that person thinking about me? What, what does that person see wrong with me? in this moment, and regardless, maybe you're in that spot of insecurities, or, or maybe for you it's an anxiety, maybe it's for you, for you it's a sadness, maybe it's a fear, but we all have things in our brain that if we don't take care of, they will eventually take over our life completely, and so tonight I wanna talk about these bullies in our brain. And whether it was a harsh or a misspoken word from a close family member or friend, Sadly enough, the the biggest and the worst bullies oftentimes come from the words that are spoken over those who are closest to us. Someone that has a closeness in our life, someone that we have relationship with. And for those of you that have heard the statement, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. If you've heard that before, you know that that's not usually true. That words stick, that words hurt, that words cause pain. And a lot of times, if we're not careful, those words will begin to be the song that consistently and constantly replays in our mind. And so what do we do with this? What do we do with these thoughts? What do we do with these fears? What do we do with these things in our life that we just can't seem to shake? These thoughts that we have that we know that they're not necessarily right and they may not necessarily be wrong, but we don't want to have them. So what do we do? Last week, we talked about the story of David at Collective, and we're actually gonna go back to his story in just a minute, but before we do that, I wanna encourage you with a verse in 2 Timothy. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So if God has not given us a spirit of fear, if God has not called us to be timid, if this is something that's not from God, then we know it must be from the enemy. But on the flip side of this, God just doesn't leave us hanging and say, hey, don't do those things. God says, hey, I've, I've got something to help. I've got power, I have love, and I have self-discipline. 
See, God gives us a boldness and a confidence that we can only find through his spirit. And so what this verse tells us is, is if we're experiencing fear, if we're experiencing a timidity in our lives, this lets us know that this is not of God. And I don't know about you, but if there's anything in my life that's not of God, I don't want it to be in my life anymore. And so tonight I don't wanna talk about how to get rid of these things. And fear and being timid are not necessarily sins. I mean, God calls us to fear him and a, and a holy fear for him. So, so fear in and of itself is not a sin. But what I found about fear is that fear will oftentimes leave you vulnerable to the lies of the enemy. Think about this. If you've ever watched a National Geographic or a, a nature uh, page on Instagram and you've seen the small little animal and you've seen the giant lion or the cheetah or the predator that's waiting out and what you see oftentimes is they don't go after the leader of the pack. They don't go after a big group. They single out one. They single out one antelope or deer or whatever it may be that's, that's maybe going a little slower than the rest of the people in the group or, or the animals in the group. Or maybe it's, maybe it's wounded. Maybe it's hurting. Maybe it's, it's struggling to keep up. It's in a vulnerable state. And with you, the enemy is the same way. And the reason the enemy loves fear to be in your mind and loves to replay those thoughts inside of your heart is because he knows that if you live your life out of fear, then you become vulnerable to the lies that he wants to feed you. And so I believe from the bottom of my heart, one of my callings for you is to expose the lies of the enemy. And so I wanna do that tonight. And we see in David's story, we see that David dealt with his fair share of bullies in his life. And we see one of these bullies that David and all of the Israelites faced was a giant named Goliath. And I wanna focus on a different aspect of this story that a lot of times we don't give as much attention to. And we'll start in 1 Samuel 17 and verse 24. If you have your Bibles, you can flip there with us. If not, we've got it on the screens for you. And it says, as soon as the Israelite army saw him, referring to the giant that was Goliath, it says, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant, the men ask? He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to whoever kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife and the man's entire family will be exempt from paying taxes. I wanna focus on that verse 25. Have you seen the giant, the men ask. And they see this, and what's important to note in this moment is the people that are saying, have you seen the giant? The, the men that are fleeing, that are running, that are scared to death of this Goliath are the bravest, the biggest, the baddest, the warriors. Even those that would stand against anyone wouldn't stand against this giant. And they find themselves asking the question that maybe you've asked yourself when it comes to a bully. Have you seen that giant? Maybe you find yourself in conversations and maybe even in your small group where we talk about how the great things that God has done in our life and you find yourself week after week after week asking yourself the question, have you seen my giant? If you only knew the depression that I was facing, if you only could experience the anxieties that I deal with every single day, if you only knew the fear and the weight of that fear that I walk into school with each and every day, maybe you've asked, have you seen this giant? Have you seen the anxieties? Have you seen the depression, the insecurities? They come every single day. Even when I feel my strongest, there's a giant standing over me. But David in this moment, and I love David, and I love what he does, even as a young person, similar in age to where you are now, is David, instead of fearing the giant, he questions the giant. He said, and David asked the soldiers standing nearby, what will a man get for killing the Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel. And who is this pagan anyway? That he is allowed to defy the armies of a living God. And these men gave David the same reply and they said, yes, this is the reward for killing him. So here David is questioning what everyone else fears, beginning to question the very essence of the fear that they are believing in in this moment. But what I love about David's response he says, how is this man even allowed to defy our living God? And I believe for you in this room that are struggling with these things, these bullies in our brain, we have to begin to ask ourselves, why are we allowing them to defy what our living God has said about us? And let me tell you, and let me be very clear that I believe that anxiety is real. I believe that depression is real. There are some of you that have walked through so many sessions with, with someone where you've talked about things. Some of you are even on medication for the things that you're dealing with in your life and the bullies that are in your brain. And so I don't wanna for a moment 
discount that because I know that that's real. But as I'm, I feel like I'm called to expose the lies of the enemy, like I told you, and I'll beat this drum until the day that I die. I know that your anxiety is real, and I know that your depression is real, but I also know that our God is real. And I know that God, the God that we serve, is strong. He is mighty. He is above all things. My word says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And so what if we began to look at those giants in our life, not as a giant to run from in fear, but as an enemy to be conquered? What if we looked at our anxiety, we looked at our depression, and I'm not saying that you won't struggle, but what if we looked at that struggle as an enemy that we can win against? Just like David, when the world seems to be running and cowering from the bully that they face, David says, my God can handle that. Why are you even letting him speak these things over you guys? Why are you even allowing him to attack you? Don't you know that you're God's people? Why are you allowing him to defy your God? And who is this pagan anyway? Who is this evil guy anyway? Some of the thoughts that you have in your life are purely evil. They are evil things and they're not your fault. It wasn't the Israelites' fault that David, that Goliath approached them but their retreat, their, their lack of desire to fight what God had called them to conquer is where they lose their strength. And the reason I say this is because I believe that you should constantly be questioning your thoughts. The Bible tells us that our heart is deceitful above all else, and sometimes your feelings will lie to you. Your thoughts will lie to you. You should constantly be questioning your thoughts. You should ask yourself, why am I having these thoughts? Should I be having these thoughts? And most importantly, what does God's word have to say about these thoughts, these lies that I find myself in? See, sometimes the bullies that we face are are the ones that we've become comfortable with. And I look at a generation that is hurting, that is broken. If we were to go through statistics, we would see that this generation, our generation, is one of the most depressed, one of the most anxious generations, if not the of all time. And it doesn't seem to be getting any better. It doesn't seem like there's any way out. And I look at this world and they look a lot like the men in this story that are fleeing and running with absolutely no hope from this giant of anxiety and depression in our world. But can I tell you you tonight that you're called to be a David. You're called to in the midst of this world that normalizes and accepts and almost becomes comfortable and wears these things as a badge of honor. You're called to be different. Normal cannot be normal for God's people. The exception and the comfortability with these lies that the enemy has spoken cannot be the norm for your life. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying that you're struggling with them is wrong, but if you've become, if you've come into a place where you're comfortable with the lies of the enemy, then you need to reevaluate the thoughts that you're having in your life. And can I tell you that the world doesn't like when you stand up to the bullies? The world doesn't like when you decide to fight the things that they're afraid to go to battle for. And we see the same thing with David says, but when David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway, he demanded. What about those few sheep that you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and deceit, and you're here. You just want to see the battle. What have I done, David replied. I was only asking a question. He walked over to some others and asked them the same thing and received the same answer. Then David's question was reported to the king of Saul, and the king sent for him. This passage of scripture oftentimes gets overlooked in David's story, and we kind of just breeze by it, but we see that David had a hurdle when it came between him and fighting Goliath. They didn't immediately say, oh, and we would think they would say, oh, you're brave enough to fight, like, go handle this. Please go out and handle that situation for us. We can't do it, but they discourage him. It's almost as if they want him to have the same fear that they have. They want him to be in the same place that they are in. In the moment when they feel the weakest, they want to make sure that he feels weak too. And maybe you feel that, and as we see with David's story, it's, it's the one that's closest to him. It's, it's his oldest brother. This should have been his boy. This should have been the person that encouraged him and helped him and built him up and equipped him to go fight this giant more than anyone else. But instead of encouragement, he's met with a brother that doesn't really believe in him. And maybe you can relate to this in David. Maybe you have family members. Maybe you have had friends in your life that were supposed to be close to you, that were supposed to fight for you, that were supposed to be there with you, that were supposed to be encouragers in your life. And when you've decided to follow Jesus, you've been met with a a confusing dilemma is they're, they're not supportive. 
they don't believe that you should go to that fight. They've discouraged you in your fight, but we see that this doesn't stop David. David has an opportunity to allow the wounds and the words of his brother to cut him short, to make him fear, to make him go back. He, he doesn't just attack what he's trying to do. He attacks his character. He says, I know about your pride. I know about your deceit. Man, you're just, you're just faking this thing. And for some of you, the bully in your brain that you're facing is exactly that. Yeah, I know you made a decision to follow Jesus at Collective last week, but do you remember what you did on Monday? Yeah, yeah, I know that you had this crazy experience at camp, but man, doesn't that happen every year? You know you're gonna be back where you came from before. Yeah, I know that this week's been really good. You've been so full of joy, but let me remind you of that depression that you're dealing with, that depression that you were told is gonna be something that you deal with for the rest of your life. Don't you remember that? See, the enemy loves us to remind us of the lies when God is trying to bring us truth. So I wanna call you tonight, just as David does in this story, to choose confidence in God's call over your life, to overcome anxieties and the fears that we face through the power of the Holy Spirit. I wanna call you tonight to never become comfortable in things that God has not called you to, and instead be comfortable and confident in your calling. So tonight, what is your calling? What does that look like? And I'm not talking about a a vocation. I'm not talking about a job and the future, but right now, what's your call? I believe that your greatest calling on your life in this stage of your life right now as a Christ follower is simply to be a son and a daughter of the king. Your greatest calling on your life right now is to be a son and daughter to the one who you call Lord, the one who you call Father, the one that that we call Jesus. Hebrews 4.16 encourages us, and it says, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. And at that throne of our gracious God, it says, there we will receive his mercy, and we will find the grace to help us when we need it most. See, the gift of God and the gift of Jesus Christ not only gives us access to the throne, but it gives us the ability to approach him in confidence. And the reason that I say this is because I think that there's so many of you in this room and there's so many Christians in our world today that don't know that they actually have access to the Father. They have access to everything that he has for your life. I'll put it this way, and I shared this with our, or we shared this with our our JHI group this weekend, but I wanna talk to you about fridge rights for just a minute. How many of you have ever gone to a friend's house and you've gotten fridge rights before? You, where you're, somebody's been like, hey, you don't have to ask, you can just go to the fridge. Those are the best friends. I love those kind of friends. But how many of you have ever asked your parents for fridge rights? Like, that's not really something that we do. Maybe some of you would ask your parents for that. But, but the reason that you don't have to ask or that you feel comfortable, because it would be wild if we ask every time we had to go to the refrigerator at our home. But the reason that we don't do this is because we know that it's, if it's our house, then we have access to everything that's in that refrigerator. And the thing is, we didn't do anything. We didn't buy those groceries. Your parents did. You, you didn't buy anything. You didn't earn the food that's in your fridge. But because your mom and dad bought those things and because they are your father, they are your mother, you know that you have access to anything in the fridge. And in the same way, when we allow God to come into our life, when we give him our life, when we allow him to be our father, and when we choose him to be our savior and our Lord, the Bible says that you now have access to him. And when you have access to him, you then have access to everything in his fridge, everything that he has, the joy that he wants to bring to your life, you have access to that. The peace that he calls us to, you now have access to that. All you have to do is come to him, come to his throne, take it. He says, if you ask, you will receive. You can come to his throne room boldly and confident. So the confidence and the calling that he's calling you tonight is remember you're a son. Remember that you're a daughter. You're not some redheaded stepchild that he's trying to withhold good things from. You are a son. You are a daughter. I grew up as a step kid, so don't think I'm calling you out if you're a step kid. Um, but man, he's, you're a son, you're a daughter. Don't you know that you have access to everything that he has for your life? So tonight, don't give up on the call that God has given you to be a son or a daughter. Tonight, we need to realize that we serve a good father. 
So how is God calling you tonight to show up in confidence? I believe God is taking us to take a stand tonight instead of fleeing from the giants in our life to stand right in front of them and say, I know this is big. I know that this thing is strikes fear in everyone around me, but as a child of God, I refuse to let these lies defy the truths of my God. I'm gonna pray for you tonight and then we're gonna go into small groups, but God, I thank you for the students in this room. God, I thank you for your mercy and your grace that surrounds us in this place tonight. God, I thank you that you are such a good father and that you desire good things for our life. And God, we know that you are the very essence of goodness, that you can do nothing bad because you yourself are good. And so God, we want nothing more than you tonight. God, I pray would you open eyes in this room to see that they have access to you. They have access to your spirit. They have access to everything that you've called them to. God, I pray that you would begin to shine a light on the deepest and darkest parts of their heart tonight, God. The anxieties, the fears, the intimidations, the insecurities, the the walls that they've put up that have kept them from you, God. God, that you don't look at them in disappointment, You don't look at them in anger, but you look to them as a good father who just simply wants their children to be free. And so God, I pray for freedom, pray for a boldness, pray that as we talk about these things and unpack these things in small group, would we begin to feel the freedom that you have for our lives. God, we thank you in advance for all the incredible things that you're gonna do tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.